Welcome to NST Spinal Integration. My name is Michael Nixon Libby. I'm the developer of NST, and it's my pleasure to be your tutor throughout this live DVD hands on presentation. As our focus today is going to be on how to do NST as opposed to why it might be working, it'll be useful if we can cover a few basics on the development and theory of NST prior to getting to the table. It'll just enable us all to be at the same common starting point. I developed NST between the years of 1991 and 1995 in Melbourne, Australia, and from 1996 taught it throughout mainland Europe to groups of osteopaths, chiropractors, physiotherapists, and other professional body worker groups in intensive postgraduate seminars. As a result of the seminars, NST's popularity grew tremendously, spawning new frontiers into the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, and the Middle East. Today, I'm delighted to be able to report that NST is a household name in some of the most respected educational institutes around the world. Quite apart from the research program that we conducted, our own ongoing worldwide clinical statistics continue to confirm that 95% of people receiving an NST session report a positive post-sessional outcome. A staggering 80 plus percent of those individuals go on to achieve total resolution of their presenting symptoms within one to five sessions. Now that clearly puts NST in a class of its own. So NST is short for Neurostructural Integration Technique and as its name suggests is all about the integration of the structure by stimulation of the nervous system or perhaps better put the neuromuscular system. The application itself consists of sequences of specialized rolling movements called prime moves that are applied to selected soft tissues throughout the lumbar, thoracic and cervical regions of the body and also upper and lower extremities as required. The prime move or PRI move meaning proprioceptive rolling impulse movement has a curious multi-layered effect depending on where it's applied and this is one of the main reasons why NST is as effective as it is. A prime move has the capacity to be able to sedate the tissue to which it's been applied whilst at the same time reaching other muscles and organs and resetting them via classical spinal reflex arcs and then travelling even further via classical afferent and efferent or if you like sponocerebellar and corticospinal pathways to other targeted muscles throughout the body. The effect of applying sequences of prime moves to the body is that at a certain point a critical mass is reached within the neuromuscular system causing a tipping point whereby the organism is induced into a state of self-regulation or autoregulation. The resultant effect is a systematic recalibration of the neuromuscular system characterized by spinal integration, a rapid reduction in pain, enhanced physiology levels and vitality. So as I said before, the subject of this presentation is to demonstrate the very powerful three-part dynamic body balance, lumbar, thoracic and cervical. Now the lumbar section has nine bilateral points, the thoracic section has five bilateral points and the cervical section has six bilateral points. What I'm going to do with this first presentation is to run through the whole sequence with a few small pauses for extra information addition and uh, but mainly I'd like to emphasize that this is just for visual input this is just for you to get an idea of how it looks to do an NST session the core part of it at least anyway after I've completed this I'll invite Linda to come up our expert practitioner for the day and uh, she'll go through exactly the same balance much more slowly and with a lot more detail so we'll you'll see it in two different ways by the time we're finished so let's get started with our first point here. And uh, I'll, as I said, give few instructions and just observe 
the, the way it's done. And you'll see that the sequence moves from here to here to the backs of the legs and so on. So just observe, make any notes that you'd like to make. So take a big breath in, please, John. And breathe out. Big breath in and breathe out. Big breath in and breathe out. Big breath in, breathe out. Big breath in and breathe out. Once again, a big breath in and breathe out. So. The first three points are respiration assisted, the others are not. So I would instruct my client in a, uh, in a clinical setting just to resume normal breathing. So you can breathe normally now, John. Point number four, of course, as you can see. So once again, you'll see it's not too quick. It's just a nice mobile pace. So once we've completed the first five bilateral points in Dynamic Body Balance Part 1, uh, this is a great opportunity to stop and have a, have a pause uh, for the person in, in a clinical setting because uh, it really adds some depth to how the balance works. Uh, having pauses throughout the session are really classical to NST. We do this quite a bit and it really potentizes the whole balance. So in a clinical setting, we'd probably even leave the room and uh, the pause could be anywhere from two minutes up, up to a maximum of 10 minutes. Now the simple rule that we would use for that, of course, is that the less severe the condition is, the shorter the break. The more severe, the longer the break. So let's say we've had our break, we've come back, our, in the, throughout the process of this break, the body has really started to move into a lot of auto-regulation, so it's really starting to change a lot and for those uh, who are checking things out as we're going along you'll start to notice quickly that the muscle uh, tension is changing automatically by itself everywhere that uh, we've been applying prime moves. So to resume the session we'd come back, start at our point six. Eight, you can see on the screen. It's point nines. So once again, when part one has been complete, determined by having finished its nine points, depending on how the client presented. In other words, if they presented with a lot of tension, we would give another pause here. Not as long as the first one, but one or two minutes just to allow the body to assimilate the changes that are going on. If the person was in good condition, like John is here today, I'd keep on moving. I wouldn't give a pause there at all. So let's do that. So I'll invite Linda up now to come and do the same three-part body balance, but we'll add a little bit more detail when necessary just to make things a bit clearer. So welcome, Linda. So what I'm going to do with uh, Linda's demonstration today is to interrupt her quite a lot just for your benefit here so you do get to see what's going on and, and why it's going on. But we'll keep things moving just the same. So away you go, Linda. Hi, John. <laughs> okay. Take a deep breath for me. I'm just locating. There we go. Take a deep breath for me. And exhale. So notice she did things nice and slowly there. That's and point again. number two. Just breathe in again, that's it. 
you'll notice that the prime move at this point is a lot springier and uh, it actually has the effect of sedating the lower thoracic spine and at the same time is very important to start bringing our diaphragm back into balance. So this is uh, our secondary respiratory mechanism thinking has started already. Point number one has really regulated sacrum as I said before. Point number two, lower thoracic spine and diaphragm. So I'll let you keep going. Okay, take a deep breath for me. A lovely circular prime move is done there, crossing the junction of gluteus maximus, gluteus medius. Excellent, really good. Very good for hips and sacrum itself. So once again, our focus is on releasing sacrum as effectively as we can. So what you notice Linda is doing here, even though it may appear to you that she's just pushing down, she's actually applying traction in this direction here. So the hand is pushing down and away while the leg is causing an, an opposite and equal traction in the other direction. So the idea of this is to assist the sacroiliac articulations to settle back into their appropriate position. <coughs> Lovely deep prime move on the medial head of the hamstring tendon. Now Linda's applying three or four prime moves up the iliotibial band. Once again, regulating the tensions of the big cables in the lower part of the body. Very important to do. Same on the other side. Notice she's changing her thumbs because she's working away from herself with the fingers. Now the fingers play this role in this part. starting to wish this was me on the table. <laughs> Feels very good. So, well done. So just stop at that point for a second, please, Linda. If you think about this, um, we're wanting to, I keep on emphasizing it, I know, but it's important to get. We, we want to ensure that our sacrum and pelvic girdle has as much chance as possible to resume its normal motility. So point number one was a sedation point for the lumbar spine generally, and the sacrum and the hamstring, so point number one. Point number two, for the lower thoracic spine, the diaphragm itself. Point number three was for the, uh, on the gluteus maximus, gluteus medius junction for the sacrum once again, and the hips themselves. Point four, enabled the sacrum to settle back into its articulations, the sacroiliac articulation. Point number five, and A, B, and C, or D as the case was, uh, was equalizing the tensions attached to the bottom of the pelvis on the ischial tuberosity of the big hamstring muscle. So all of this, in other words, is being focused around taking tension off the sacrum so that it can resume its normal motility. That's the idea of doing this. So uh, very important that we've established that. And so now Linda will continue with point number six from part one. And the sacrum is under the surface there going, wow, this is just great. It's the first time I've had a chance to really uh, get back into my normal rhythm for a long time. And uh, perhaps not in the case of John here, but uh, clients we see in the clinical situation who are really uh, stuck with the handbrake of the body on, as I said before. They, uh, the sacrum, once it starts moving, uh, it's a wonderful feeling. People feel sensations running up and down the legs and the back and quite a deep sense of uh, release, finally. Point number seven, we are on the erector spinae muscle. They help to, to stimulate the erector spinae and the deeper intervertebral muscles, facilitating core release and vertebral integration. Point number eight is kind of a blending technique, if you like. It helps to blend the musculature of the lumbar and lower thoracic spines. Notice Linda used her thumb there. It suits, that's fine, that's great. I mean, it's, it's a personal thing. I use fingers, but that's fine. That's really fine. Works just as well both ways. And 
closing, closing, closing. So point number nine tends to uh, return the musculature of the, of the lumbar spine and the lower thoracic spine to their normal neuromuscular status. We call this closing the channel, in fact. So that completes dynamic body balance part one with a little bit more depth, a little bit more information to take you deeper into the body. And uh, as I said before, in a clinical setting, two to 10 minute pause, depending on the severity of the condition. The less severe, the less the break. The more severe, the longer the break. Maintaining a strong and healthy spine with techniques like NST plus a balanced lifestyle can therefore be the perfect platform to achieve sustainable health. Perhaps Thomas Edison put it better all the way back in 1902 when he said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but instead will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and the causes and prevention of disease. Thank you.